Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And today we are going back to British Columbia, Canada. And this case kind of ties in with another case that I most recently did. And their areas are fairly similar, about seven hours away, but we're going to talk about it. But this case in particular took place on Baby Mundi Peak, which is in the Cheam Range of British Columbia. Now, this area is in the Western uh, Peaks Range and that's the area is known as Fraser Valley, which are visible from different places depending on where you are. It is um, a very, very rugged. It is in the lower mainland of British Columbia near the city of Chilliwack. But this area is, uh, as you can see in the pictures, it's very rugged, very mountainous. There's many different peaks. And it's often referred to as the Lucky Four group because of the proximity to an abandoned Lucky Four mine. And the highest point within it is Welch Peak. So as you can see, this area is not only beautiful, but it's very rugged and it would be very challenging for most hikers. We're going to be talking about Gordon Segu, who disappeared on August 14th of 2016. Now, one of the main things that makes this very odd was because he wasn't hiking alone. He was hiking with friends and they were hiking up to the uh, peak on British Columbia on Sunday, August 14th of 2006. And as his, his friends report that he, Gordon walked ahead of the group to apparently explore another area. His friend said that on partic that particular day, Gordon decided to go and try and do another peak while the others in the group just hiked near uh, a nearby lake. Lake, and they had all agreed to meet later in the day at, at another lo location that they set. But Gordon never arrived at that spot, so they immediately called search and rescue, and they were well, not immediately. They were first called out on the night of August 14th to look for Gordon in and around the Chilliwack River area. He was last seen near the Baby Mundy Peak, so friends and family said that he, since he was really experienced, it was hard to know which area he might have gone in. But after this, a massive search involving like all types of ground teams, helicopters, police, drones, dogs, you name it, the whole works, they were all involved. And this was a very tough search because of the terrain and just because, I mean, as you can see in the pictures, it's very rugged, but they even brought in specialized units from the North Shore Search and Rescue. They, they brought in a thermal imaging camera to try and track him. Special dog teams that had special training on these type of mountains. They had, uh, his family had returned to the mountains daily, looking for any signs, putting up pictures of him. Crews from around all this region scoured the area on foot. They still couldn't find any trace of Gordon, but they kept the search going using any tactic they could find and at night as well. They even brought in teams from around Lions Bay, Surrey, and Quilcottam. I think I said that right. Searched the around in and around that peak for two or three days and f still found no sign of Segu. And everybody that knew him said it was so bizarre because of the group, he was the strongest physically and mentally he had uh, picked up uh, marathon running when he was in 40s he was 50 years old at the time of this his disappearance but he had been running marathons for years he had completed several marathons he was very experienced in the outdoors and hiking this type of terrain uh, one of his relatives uh, his niece told uh, cbs news that he was carrying at least three liters of water with him at the time that he went missing and she also said that he was very, very familiar with the terrain that they were currently in. And according to one of the members that was hiking with Sugu that day, they said that after they separated, they thought that they could see Gordon ahead way down the trail because they could see someone in the distance. However, when they got down to that trailhead, he wasn't there. So another hiker in their group went back looking for him. They still couldn't find him. Now, at that time, this person said that they her and her partner could not find any trace of Segu and they both drove back to Chilliwack and that's when they immediately called the search and rescue 
uh, because at the time when they were out there, they had no cellular reception, unfortunately. So there was a small amount of space in between when they first realized he was missing. But I mean, like I said, his family, they all told the news and the search teams that he was a very, very well prepared individual. And he was considered the group's leader. He was the one that knew like how to navigate and was ensuring everyone else's safety during these hikes. So this was just so out of character and so bizarre. But the other side of that, after certain, a certain amount of time passes by, it does, you know, the odds of someone being able to survive goes down dramatically. Now, according to Sa Staff Sergeant Steve Valorek, who was the Chiliwek RCMP captain at the time, said that even though Segu was very experienced and he was a trail runner and a hiker and he was, you know, equipped for maybe that hike, he said that he didn't have the proper equipment to spend an expended, extended amount of time out in the mountains alone. He also said that the they were going to, at the time, they were going to keep continuing the search, and the, but unfortunately that due to you know fund, funding issues, the Chilliwack Search and Rescue were starting to have to call back their search. But luckily the friends and family of Gordon had started a fundraising page to help raise money to keep the search and rescue options going. But unfortunately, after another week on August 21st, the Chilliwack Search and Rescue had checked and wrote all their aspects is what they said and they recommended to the RCMP that they call off the search they said quote it was suspended due to after a long consideration after consulting with SAR members from Kent Harrison SAR Colt Quitman SAR the North Shore Rescue the management team from Chilliwack SAR they said that they reviewed all the aspect of the search operation and there was a report that was presented saying recommending the suspension of the search for Mr. Segu, which of course is always a devastating announcement, especially for the family and friends of the, the missing person. I mean, I know that his family is quoted in saying like it was the hardest, you know, times of their life having to go home every day, not knowing where he was and not being able to have any information, which, you know, I, I can't imagine. And what is so baffling in this case is that they didn't find anything. They didn't find any pieces of gear. They didn't find any other evidence. And they had, you know, tons of teams out there. And his friends that were hiking with him weren't that far away when they separated paths. And they went right back down the same trail that they had originally started hiking with Gordon. But they found nothing. I mean, not his sunglasses, not his water bottle, nothing, which is just very bizarre. And I know that a lot of people have uh, said it bears similar traits to uh, the case I covered about Mr. Jetty and Mr. Mrs. Rachel Bangal, uh, which they were hiking together as well, about seven hours north of where this took place in a place called uh, Lake Valentine. But it was a similar type of situation. They were both very experienced hikers. They went out and uh, they were never found again. The only thing that was ever found of them was uh, their vehicle parked on the side of the road. So it's just a very bizarre thing. That, and there are... a bunch of other people that have gone missing in and around this area of British Columbia. Now this is a map of basically where Segu went missing and the couple that I spoke of earlier in the other video. And I'll have a link to that video in the description if you're interested in looking at that. But there's also been a lot of other disappearances in and around this area. Now I am going to cover them on the channel. I'm just working on a few other videos as well. And a lot of people say, well, okay, this area is extremely rugged. It can be very dangerous. Obviously one slip and fall could have you know, happened to either of these people. Then there's other people that say, of course, animal predation is always a possibility. But with the case of animals, there's almost always evidence. And, you know, especially when the people are reported missing right away and they have a search going out. And with, you know, Gordon, he was hiking with other people and they weren't that far away from him. They got on this search almost immediately. And it was just like he vanished into thin air. And to this day, he still remains missing. And I'm sure that his friends and family are still just desperate to know what happened to him because these types of things, they just linger in one's mind. And I know that, you know, you really even know it might be not the type of closure you want. I know that a lot of these families are just really hurting and I just hope that we can really help them and bring some of their loved ones home one way or another. 
So I really, uh, if any of you guys live in these areas, I really ask to you know share the stories, share the pictures of the missing and of what they were wearing and the, you know what the details of the situation because who knows what somebody might find. And it's often other hikers, campers, hunters, people that are in the outdoors that end up finding clues that lead to uh, the recovery of bringing some of these people home. And a lot of times it's because they're aware of what the story was, you know, and they might not be so quick to just pass something off as, oh, someone just lost the hat or something. So in any event, I would like to dedicate this video to Gordon Segu, his friends, his family, all his loved ones. Once again, Gordon Segu disappeared on August 14th, 2016 from the Baby Mundy Peak in the British Columbia area of Canada. Gordon was only 50 years old at the time. He was hiking with two other friends and they say that he just walked a little further north of him or uh, to check out another peak and that was the last time anyone ever saw him. And cases like this where experienced hikers are out with one another or in groups and they vanish within a few feet of each other is very, very bizarre. And honestly, I don't have any theory of my own but if you guys have any thoughts or would like to tell me your theories please leave them in the comments and um, i know a lot of you are probably familiar with this story but uh, as always i want to say thank you for following along and watching if you're not subscribed i'd ask you to maybe give me a chance and subscribe if not thank you for watching and i hope everyone had a great weekend Thank you so much for watching and please be respectful in the comments if you choose to leave them. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. These guys are awesome if you've never checked their channel out and their music. They've got great stuff so check them out. I want to say thank you for bearing with me for the upload schedule. Like I said I've just been uh, crazy busy with family and I've just been feeling a little bit under the weather. Nothing serious but you know how that goes. Um, and I really appreciate everybody's uh, positive support and feedback. I hope everybody had a great weekend. And uh, if you have any case suggestions for me, please send them to me. I'll leave my email in the description as well. And I still do have some merch calendars. They are $17. I'll have that information in the description as well. And I just wanted to remind everybody with a lot of these cases, a lot of them don't get a lot of media coverage and then the media coverage that they do get is limited or has very little information. So if I miss something or you know something else, please let me know in the comments or correct me. I'm just trying to get the best, most accurate information out there about these cases and these missing people. So if there's anything that you know, please let me know and I will update. I'll pin a comment in the section and thank you so much.